Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Well, good afternoon if you're joining us in the UK and Europe or uh, on the East Coast of the States. If you're joining us from the West Coast, still good morning. If you're joining us from the Middle East or Southeast Asia, uh, good evening, late good evening, or very early morning to you, depending on where you're joining us from. We're going to give it a few minutes to let people uh, register and sign in. We've got over 300 people who've signed up for this, uh, this afternoon's webinar uh, with the Charles University First Faculty of Medicine in Prague. Uh, I went thematic for today on my green screen. Uh, 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 Professor Brisman and Susanna have gone corporate and our Virginia, our medical student, has gone very clinical. So uh, as people are dropping in now, I can see the numbers going up all the while as we speak. What we're going to do is we've got around about a 90 minute uh, session booked and we will finish after a half, one, one and a half hours. So uh, hopefully we'll get through all the questions by the end of this. We're going to start off with a presentation uh, after some introductions, which will last around about 30 minutes. Then there's going to be plenty of time for you guys who've signed in to ask questions. Now, there's two ways. Well, more than two ways you can ask questions. What I, if you're joining us on Zoom, my advice is use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. If you tap the question in there, then don't worry, we're not going to disclose your identity. And if you want to be anonymous, you can be anonymous. Write in the question there. We'll deal with all questions when we come to the end after the presentation. We'll feel those questions either to Professor Brisman, Susanna or Virginia, depending on who's best suited to answer the question that's posed. We will read all questions out. The reason for that is, is that not everyone can see your question on the screen. And also this session is being li uh, streamed live on YouTube and Facebook. So we do obviously want people who are watching there as well to have the opportunity to listen to your question and listen to the answer, as well as those people who are looking at the recording of this perhaps tomorrow, next week, next year, whenever that may be. Because once this uh, goes live on uh, YouTube, it will then be available to watch after the event as well. So just tap them into the Q&A feature. What I would say as well, is do not be afraid to ask any question that you might have. Uh, generally speaking, if you've got the question, I can guarantee a significant number of other people who are joining us today will also have the exact same or a related question as well. And don't be worried about repeating questions if you join us at different times. We'll be able to kind of go over those answers. We've got plenty of time uh, to go over everything that will be posed to us uh, this afternoon. So I want to go through some introductions first. I'm going to introduce everyone to Professor Eitan Brisman, who's the uh, Vice Dean of International Affairs at Charles University First Faculty of Medicine. Uh, you'll uh, find out when you listen to Eitan that Eitan is not a Czech. He's actually British uh, and was one of the very first graduates of the English programme from the First Faculty of Medicine before he then relocated to the UK to train as a dentist and become a consultant maxofacial surgeon and is uh, relocated back to the wonderful city of Prague. And if you can look at the image behind me, you'll see why going to Prague to study and to live is a great uh, uh, opportunity. And then I'm gonna introduce Susanna now. Susanna is the head of the international office. Uh, Susanna doesn't deal with your applications per se and things like that. She's gonna be dealing with things like the uh, strategy of the international office, much more strategic role to support Eitan in what he does outside of his academic roles. And Virginia, Virginia is a student joining us today who's actually come from the United States, from North Carolina specifically, currently a second year student. So in the second year of the preclinical studies, which you'll find out more when you listen to the presentation. And at the end, Virginia is going to really be able to talk to you a lot more about those first stages in university and how to really get through that first and second year. We do have other webinars in the past, which are on our YouTube channel, uh, where we do with students who are perhaps further into the course. If you want to discuss anything about clinical education, we'll be able to discuss that as well. But if you do want a student's perspective, just look at our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button and do take a look at some of the recordings uh, that we've done from webinars in last year and the year before. Okay, so I think without any further ado, uh, quite a lot of people have signed in and more people are now joining us. Uh, Susanna, I think you're going to start the presentation off for us. So if you want to go ahead and share your screen, I'm going to mute my mic and keep myself quiet. And then uh, Professor Brisman will take over halfway through the presentation as well. Susanna, it's over to you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for the lovely introduction of all of us from uh, First Faculty of Medicine, Charles University. Uh, I believe that you are now able to see, see my screen and our presentation that we prepared to, for you. 
Uh, as it was said, uh, my name is Susanna and I work in the international office at the first faculty of medicine. And first, we would like to introduce uh, first faculty of medicine, Charles University. Uh, what it's about, what you can expect when you decide to study uh, in Prague, in the Czech Republic, Czech Republic, and what's the student life about. That's why we also have our, one of our students here. And as it was explained by Ben from Medical Doorway, there is um, no way to ask a wrong question. So if you have any, please share with, with us. Please ask. We are here to answer all of your questions about our university. Um, and we hope that you will join us in the near future for, for your studies. OK, so I'll, first I'll, I will start with the short video uh, about, uh, about the university. I will just start just sharing once again because I believe that I didn't click on sharing sound. So I will start once again and now I, we will start with the video. Sorry. Okay, so you just saw a short video uh, about our faculty, uh, but also it's really important to explain you what it's about, well, where Charles University comes from and why you should choose us. So today in the presentation, you will definitely learn why first faculty of medicine or LF1 as we call it, it's, it's a good choice for you. We will talk about the programs that we offer. All the programs that we're gonna talk about today are completely in English. We will also talk about entrance examination, which is really essential for you to get to Charles University, first faculty of medicine. And we will also talk about student life. We said that uh, first faculty of medicine, Charles University uh, is located at Czech Republic. You may heard, hopefully, uh, about our country. Uh, you may see uh, the colors of our flag and uh, you can see a picture from our capital city of Prague and why you should choose Czech Republic as your study destination is that because our country, it's really peaceful, it's really historical and it's uh, full of beautiful, beautiful historical places, full of nature and it's really good place uh, for studies as, as a study destination. It's definitely a smart choice for you when it comes to um, affordable living, the cost of living, it's really affordable in the Czech Republic. Uh, we are located in the heart of Europe. Uh, you can see that we are surrounded by four countries, Germany, Austria, Poland, and Slovakia. And we have uh, almost 11 million inhabitants in the Czech Republic. Um, nowadays, more and more foreigners are coming to study in the Czech Republic, not only to study, but also to work here. We have a lot of communities here, expats, and mm, we are really welcoming of foreigners who are coming here to, to study, to work here, or even live in, in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, I would say that most of the foreigners, they decide to stay in our capital city, which is Prague. Uh, you may heard of Prague. I'm sure that you know, some of you already been here. You, you heard about it, that it's really, again, historical, beautiful city, full of UNESCO sites. Uh, you can see one of them on, on the picture that I'm showing you in the presentation. 
Prague is also a really green city. Uh, it's a city full of parks and vegetation. So if you like to spend your free time in the nature, nature uh, Prague is definitely a good choice for you if you decide to come here. I already mentioned the international community uh, in Prague. In Prague, we are also really proud of, of our public transportation, which is really excellent and easy to use, even for foreigners who come here to, to live in. Also, compared to other cities in, in Western Europe or even United States, uh, the living costs are really affordable, even for students. So if you decide to, to come here, it's really good to know that um, you can live here very easily. And once again, as I said, it's it's affordable place to live in. Uh, after all, we will mention the average living costs that, uh, that are required to, to stay here. And I will also highlight um, startups that are located in, in Prague, the uh, new technologies that we are starting in the Czech Republic and Prague, not only Prague, but also other cities. And um, as you will learn, uh, Prague is the home of Charles University. And in Prague, we have 14 faculties. But you will learn more about the university just in a bit. If we talk about Charles University, which is also my university, so that's why I find it very personal when I talk about university, because I also studied at Charles University. Uh, I wasn't a medical student. I studied a different field, but I'm also an alumni of, of the university. I'm, I'm really a proud member of, of, of the university, and I would definitely recommend it to you and also to other students who want to study here. So Charles University is actually one of the oldest universities in Central Europe. You can see that we were founded in the 14th century. And the first faculty of medicine was actually one of the first founding faculties uh, because originally in, in, in the time we had four faculties. Nowadays, the university has 17 faculties covering different fields, not only medicine, but we can offer social sciences, law, math, physics, theology. There is much more to offer. But here today, we are uh, representing First Faculty of Medicine at Charles University. The university, it's a public university. And as you can see, we are ranked as among the top 2% of universities worldwide. If you um, uh, scroll down through rankings, you will find Charles University definitely there. If you look for the First Faculty of Medicine, we are doing even better, but we will talk about it in, in a minute. And um, as you can see that Charles University, it's quite historical and traditional university, but at the same time, we are trying to stay modern and cosmopolitan. Uh, we are really proud of our research activities. Uh, Charles University is best research institution in the Czech Republic, and it belongs to the top research um, centers or universities in Europe. So if you are looking for a good research opportunities. That's another reason why you should study at First Faculty of Medicine, Charles University. And you can also see the Charles University in total. We have uh, almost 50,000 students, including 10,000 international students, which is really high number for university in, in Prague in Central Europe. And our students are coming from more than 130 countries. And these 10,000 Ten thousands of international students don't even include exchange students. Uh, you know, Charles University, it's so popular, for example, for Erasmus or other exchange programs. So thousands of students are coming here every year to, to study at Charles University. If we talk about the first faculty of medicine, we have about 4,500 undergraduate students. And from those, almost 800 are international students, again, coming from various countries. And definitely during your studies, you will make a lot of friends all over the world. And I'm sure that Virginia will then confirm that, that she, during her studies, she met a lot of people from various countries. Now I would like to give a floor to Dr. Brisman, our Vice Dean, who will introduce you the faculty and the entrance procedure, everything that you need to know about. Thank you very much, Ms. Anikova. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night to wherever you are joining us from the world. Um, I understand that Mr. Ambrose, through his uh, medical doorway uh, organization, we have more than 300 people joining us this evening, uh, this afternoon. Um, so, 
a little bit more. Thank you, Ms. Anikova, for, for that beginning uh, introduction to, to the university. And as, as Ms. Anikova said, um, we date back to 1348, which makes us the 11th oldest university, but the 10th oldest medical school in the world. Uh, and we're the largest medical faculty in Central Europe, in, the, in, in Czech Republic. And as Ms. Anikova hinted, although the university as a whole, all 17 faculties these days, is ranked in the top 2%, we, first faculty in medicine, are ranked in the top 1% of all medical schools globally. And in fact, a recent um, ranking by US News puts us as number 17 in the world, 17th best in the world in clinical medicine. And it's interesting it came from the US because our recognition uh, of our degree is global. So not only are we of course recognized within Czechia, within Czech Republic, but we have recognition across the whole of the EU. And now, even after Brexit, any student who studies with us, doesn't matter whether you're from EU or not from EU, whether from UK or from the moon, any graduate from us has automatic full registration with the General Medical Council for Medicine or General Dental Council for Dentistry in Britain and the United Kingdom upon graduation. We have accreditation in all 50 states of the USA. And in fact, we're one of only 20 medical schools outside of America to have California state accreditation. And with that, we have the US federal loan scheme. And as of 2020, we also have the GI Bill. So the American veterans get not only the full loan, uh, federal loan to study with us, they get also um, the grant to study with us. This is echoed by certain countries across the globe that various governments of various countries will fund their citizens to study with us up to 100% of tuition fees plus living costs to study at our faculty. Um, as a faculty, we are based in the very center of Prague. Uh, from where Mr. Ambrose's picture is, which is the, the heart of the tourist center, it's about a 10, 15 minute walk from where our main campus is, which is also great because Virginia down below, uh, on my screen anyway, uh, Virginia <laughs> has the nightlife. If they live, the students that live here nearby the faculty have the nightlife literally on their doorstep and all the, the uh, wonderful things one can do as a student in a city like this. But on our campus, it's not a residential campus because we are in the very center of Prague, but it's a, it's a medical and uh, educational campus. It's about a square kilometer right here in the very center of Prague um, that has the teaching of huge teaching hospital on site uh, and also has all the theoretical facilities, which means one of our great interests, of course, is in research. And we actively encourage research, which is very easy for students to do because it's on your doorstep all the time. But we maintain, although we have this historic age of a faculty, we maintain a very modern outlook and we maintain the most modern facilities uh, for which to teach you with, from our simulation centers through to all the high-tech equipment anyone could, could imagine. So what's our community like? Um, as Ms. Anikova pointed out, because we have about 800 students in our faculty alone from across the globe, but we're amongst a, a population of 10,000 international students in a city where there is 50,000 students just in Charles University, not including the other universities that are here in, in, in Prague. Um, it's a great student community and you'll meet people from across the globe, you'll make friends from all over the world. And I'm still, you know, I studied medicine here many years ago, I had, I had hair in those days. Um, and I'm still friends with people from all over the world that I studied with. Our curriculum is a traditional based curriculum and a, a curriculum which has been proven over centuries to work. What we believe in as an ethos for our faculty, for our university, is that we aim to give you, our students, or hopefully our future students, the tools in which you can succeed. Not just succeed at medical school, but succeed in life. Now, our aim is to help you achieve the maximum of your potential. And so our tried and tested methods prove that by giving you a base sound knowledge of preclinical education, of theoretical education, so learning anatomy, learning what the bits of the body are and where they are, then learning the physiology, learning how they work and how they do things. 
And from there, you progress on to learning the pathology of when things go wrong, when things break, and pathophysiology, when things aren't working properly. And once you understand that core, then you can go on to learning how to fix them when they go wrong. And that's the clinical side of things. So we start by giving you this, this huge amount of knowledge, this base knowledge to work with, and build up that pyramid so that no matter what happens in the future, no matter what complication comes along in the future, you will always have the tools, the knowledge, and the ability in which to solve any problem you might face. One of the key things for this is enabling you to do rotations abroad. So as Mr. Nicola mentioned, we have Erasmus, we have IFMSA and other organizations. In fact, we have the largest number of Erasmus students going through our doors in the whole of the Erasmus exchange program across Europe. But we also understand something else. Our international students that come here and study in English, 90% or more will not stay here in Czech Republic when they graduate. They wish to go and work across the world. And that's why we have this accreditation across the world. So what we want to help you to achieve the maximum of your potential is that when you choose to go to that country in which you wish to, to settle and to work in the future, you have experience in that healthcare system, in that their way of doing things clinically. So we will help you, we will enable you to do rotations abroad, including up to all three of your clinical, your pure clinical years. And I'll, I'll show you in a second the, the timetable of, of what the rotor is like on a, on a um, year by year basis. Um, but we enable you to do in key locations in top hospitals across the globe, those rotations in those countries in which you wish to work. And our clinical training, in fact, both pre and clinical, uh, are spun towards the USMLE in their way that we, are, that we teach, including we have free access for all our students to AMBOSS system, which has uh, something like a 50,000 question bank uh, for USMLE itself. And this goes to show how successful we have, because in the last year's results that came out in USMLE, we came top of the world. We beat the American universities at their own game. We beat Harvard and Yale with their results. Virginia's smiling because she's from America. Uh, so she, she knows all about this. 100% um, of our students that took the USMLE step one first time passed, 100%. 100% of our students who took USMLE Step 2 first time passed, first time. And all of our applicants who applied for residency got matching, all of them. So this is why we can maintain that accreditation throughout the States. This is why the American government gives the US federal loan. This is why the American government give us the GI Bill recognition as well. This is also why we can get wonderful students like Virginia, who will be having a word with you guys later on. So what do we offer? We offer medicine and dentistry as undergraduate uh, degrees. Both of them are master's degrees. If you're from the UK, it's equivalent to an MD. So if you look at my titles, I've got an MD in medicine, but I studied, I'm dual qualified in both medicine and dentistry. I studied medicine here in first faculty. And because I specialize in head, neck and face surgery, in the UK to be an oral and maxillofacial surgeon, you have to be dual qualified as a doctor and a dentist. So I studied dentistry at King's College in London many years later. So I have an MD from here and I have a BDS from the UK. So the equivalence is the same that you get here. Medicine, because it's a doctorate of medicine, which in Latin is medicinae universae doctora, um, is six years. It's six years and if you, got, if you want to work in the UK upon graduation, you have automatic full registration with the GMC not provisional registration like a UK graduate would get. So you actually skip that year because medical school is, is five years compulsory in the UK, of which some students do an integrated BSc during it, making it six years. But you can do medicine in five years in the UK, but then you must do your, what in the old days we call pre-registration house of year, your FY1 year. Graduates from our university are understood to have done that internship as part of your clinical rotations in the, in the three years of pure clinical education you're going to be getting. So you'll go straight in as an F2 or an SHO equivalent. In dentistry, it's a five-year course, a BDS, and we are the first university outside of Britain where we had our graduates accepted directly onto the foundation training scheme uh, for NHS provider numbers in the UK. The first university to have that. 
And of course, we also offer PhD programs for postgraduate. And if you're a really good, keen student, then you can even do uh, MD PhD. So whilst you're studying your MD, you can do research in English and publish in English in uh, high impact journals across the globe. Um, and you can graduate with an MD PhD. So the question is, how do you get to be here? How do you get to join our family? Medical Doorway is the best people to speak to for that. We've had a long time partnership with Mr. Ambrose and his company. And what we love about Mr. Ambrose's company is that he really cares about you, the students, and his, his staff will really look after you and they'll guide you every step of the way. They'll guide you on how to do the application system and all the steps required to get through there. And then he'll also guide you towards our entrance exam and interviews. Um, we take students from across the globe and we have to have a way in which we can show fairly uh, the quality of students who are applying to us. We have a limitation in number of places. In medicine, we'll take up to about 150, 160 students per year. In dentistry, we'll take 40 students per year. We have about 10 to one applicants per place available. So for that, because the high school exams are different across every country, whether it's the A-levels in the UK, the SATs in the US, the CBSEs in India, the International Baccalaureate or anything else, it'd be unfair of me to ask for specific grades from each of those exams. because There's no way to say exactly what is equivalent to three A's at A-level in IB or in CBSE or in SAT scores. So for this, we have our entrance exam and our interviews. And of course, if you're not from the EU, then you'll have to get a visa to be able to study within the EU. And that includes, unfortunately, Britain. If you're from Britain, then you'll need a visa, student visa to get here. And again, Medical Doorway will help you in gaining that. If you're not from one of the lucky countries that pays the tuition fees, for instance, Germany pays um, for your tuition fees, 100% tuition fees, um, then there are tuition fees, which is about 15,000, 15 and a half thousand pounds per year uh, at current exchange rate. It's paid in Czech crowns. The Czech, uh, like in Britain, where we want to keep our British pound, uh, the Czechs are also equally proud. And in fact, there's many similarities between the British and the Czechs, especially in their humor um, and their sarcasm, maybe. But they also uh, they like their historic Czech crown uh, as their currency. So it's still maintained in Czech crowns. So it's 450,000 Czech crowns, which is approximately 15,000 uh, British pounds or $20,000 um, to, to pay for the tuition fees. So um, the exam. The exam has essentially three parts. When you are applying, and again, Medical Doorway will help the, you with this, you have to submit a personal statement. If you've um, done your, your UCAS applications, the personal statement is similar. But unlike on UCAS, where your personal statement is broad, generic to the four medical schools you can apply for, with us, it's dedicated just for us. And you will have one sheet of A4, essentially. It's a pro forma template on, on PDF, uh, approximately 300 words, where it's your time to sell yourself as to why we should accept you over the next 10 students. Every single personal statement is read. Every single personal statement is marked, is graded in an objective grading. Um, once you've submitted your, your application form, uh, there is some small administration fee. You then have to take the exam. So the written exam is a multiple choice exam done this year online. Um, and again, Medical Doorway will guide you on that, on the dates available for it. And the written exam is in biology, chemistry, and physics. Usually when I say physics, it's a big groan. Oh, not physics. What about maths? Can do maths. In medicine, you need physics. Maths, you can get away with basic maths. You don't need advanced maths for, for medicine, but you need to understand physics, the principles of physics. Physics is applied mathematics. So if you studied mathematics to do the next step to learn the physics, it's not a big step to take but you need to know physics. You need to know the properties of the mechanics of, of let's say a hip um, implant. 
um, and uh, what the forces are that affect it to break the hip or to, to do other things. You need to know about the, the physics of, of radiation and all of other these things. You need to know physics. The good news is, though, that the exam is positively marked, and it's an aggregate of your three scores from biology, chemistry, and physics together. So if you really ace your biology and do well in your chemistry, and you do so-so in your physics, then you might be able to pass anyway by doing so well in your other subjects. The next bit of good news is once you pass the written exam, once you've passed that hurdle, all scores are back to zero. And you go on to the MMI, the multiple mini interview, which is done via Zoom. And it's a few stations looking at you and who you are. No knowledge is required. This is all about your communication, your personal skills, your those skills which have been assessed, which should be assessed to know how good a doctor you will be, how successful you can be, um, and uh, uh, how well you'll do at medical school and beyond. We do take into account that not all of you want to be clinical uh, practicing clinicians, physicians or surgeons and so on and so forth. So if you are clever enough to get more than 90 percent more than nine zero ninety percent on the written exam which is about one percent of applicants are able to do then you'll be exempt from the interviews pass the interviews welcome to our family you'll be told within about a week whether you've been successful or not uh, and we welcome you to our family so a little bit about the curriculum as you go through i mentioned earlier on it starts off in the first year with the heavy stuff, with the anatomy, with the biophysics, with the histology, embryology, genetics. But you will be seeing patients from year one. And within a few weeks of you starting, you'll be entering our high-tech simulation center and doing ALS courses and BLS courses and things on the high-tech mannequins. These mannequins, these, these high-tech dummies are so clever. There's even one for birthing where you'll practice in the later years in clinical years, in Obs and Gynae, you'll practice giving birth and all sorts of complications. You can actually do ultrasound on the abdomen, uh, on the uterus, on the womb, uh, to, and see all the fetal complications. These are extremely high tech. And not only that, <coughs> excuse me, the, the mannequins will change their responses, their, their um, um, pulse, their, their, their blood pressure, their, their pupil dilation, according to what you do when you're treating the mannequins. So you'll go through this. Second year, you'll be doing lots more of that. Third year, you'll increase. You'll be doing your, your introductions to internal medicine and surgery. <coughs> Excuse me, my dry throat. From the fourth year, it gets all clinical. And from that point onwards, from the fourth year, fifth year, halfway through the fourth year, you're only doing clinical rotations. You're doing all those specialities, ENT, internal medicine, your respiratory, cardiology, general practice, psychiatry, all these different rotations you'll be doing weeks and weeks on end. The semester is split into two, the year is split into two semesters, the winter semester and the summer semester. And like in, in the way that we want to teach you to how to study and how to become uh, good random individuals, you'll get used to a different system of examination. The system of examination in our university is based on VIVA, oral examination. You may have um written parts you may have a like multiple choice usually you, you'll almost never have an essay to write you may have practical parts like anatomy uh, doing dissections or in uh, the third year doing pathology you have to perform an autopsy but every exam culminates with a viva with an oral exam often with a board around you and this is really important because in all my years of clinical practice as a surgeon Never once have I had a patient come to me and say, Dr. Brisman, could you, could you write me an essay on my clinical diagnosis? You know, just, just two sides is enough. It's never happened. But every single patient on every single encounter examines me verbally. And the examination is not always fair because I like my patients to have a loved one with them when they're coming to see me, to speak to me, or someone that cares about them, to have some support structure there for them. And I'll have a nurse with me, most likely, and I'll probably have some junior doctors or, or some medical students with me. So there'll be a, a crowd of people watching me being examined by this patient. And it's even more unfair 
because the patient won't necessarily ask me just about the, the specific diagnosis that they came in for. They can ask me about anything and everything, and I have to be prepared for that. And that's what we will prepare you for in your examinations. Not only that, within reason, you get to choose when you take your exams. None of this, you'll be taking your uh, a genetics exam on the 3rd of June at 2 p.m. No, there will be a number of dates published throughout the exam period, which is at the end of each semester. And in fact, throughout the summer till until the end of that clinical, that sorry, academic year. And you will sign up for them. You'll choose which one you want to do. You have to set yourself the date, the deadline of what to work for uh, and get ready for it and make sure that you're not doing too much of uh, having fun uh, and student life, but actually doing some studying uh, to be able to take the exams. The exams are not easy. They're not there to be easy. And that's why you get three attempts at each exam. But the greatest reason for failure is students who don't actually turn up to the exam. So what are the reasons they might not turn up for the exam? And this is all the living costs and the fun and the, uh, the rest of Prague and why Prague is such a popular, famous city, which I'll let the younger lot tell you more about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to continue with the, with the practical stuff. Well, once again, what, what are the living costs? What is the student life uh, at our faculty? Uh, as I promised you at the beginning that I will mention approximate living costs. Uh, you can see that the price is mentioned in euros. Of course, it, as, as it was already said in the Czech Republic, we use Czech crowns. Uh, but this is just for you that you feel, feel more familiar with, with the number how much money you're going to need. This is approximately per year. Uh, you, you can see that um, I put in the brackets that it includes the accommodation in the university dorms. It's because the accommodation at the university is the most affordable accommodation that you can get in Prague. Uh, of course, uh, that uh, if you decide to stay outside of the university uh, to share an apartment with your friends, a lot of students do that then it's more costly than the university accommodation that we, that we offer to all of our international students. And as I mentioned, the, the fees, this affordable public transportation, it's, it's for the books, it's uh, for you to have fun, to go to restaurants, be with your friends. Uh, and, and it also depends on your lifestyle. Everybody is slightly, slightly different. If we talk about the student life, uh, I definitely need to mention METSOC, uh, which is our medical student association uh, at our faculty. And uh, they do various events for students. So even if you are an applicant, you can contact them. Uh, later on, I, I have um, a social media, their social media for you. So you can find them on Instagram, on Facebook, or just um, give them a, a DM and ask about studies at Charles University but it's not only about MedSoc, uh, the university and the faculty has so much more to offer. There are various uh, events when it comes to sport, culture, uh, job fairs, welcoming days. There's definitely something for everyone. Uh, and I'm proud to say that. And I would say that also student life was one of the reasons why I decided to come to Charles University. You need, you know, to meet uh, people from various countries, to make new friends, to be in the student-friendly environment. And also the, the life in Prague, it's, uh, it's really rich. And it's also one of the reasons why I decided to, to come here and study here, because there are a lot of opportunities to Prague, also when it comes to jobs, volunteering, uh, internships. So it's definitely uh, for you if, you if you are interested in these things. And also... Um, University offers you support when it comes, for example, to counseling, even though if you need assistance to speak with the counselor when it comes to your psychological help or you need advice or anything else when it comes to the life in, in the Czech Republic, the university is here for you. And as I mentioned about the accommodation, the stay in our dormitories, it's guaranteed for international students. So you don't have to be afraid that you wouldn't, you wouldn't find a place for a living. If you give us a heads up, if you apply on time, there is definitely a place for you to stay in Prague for an affordable price. And we definitely recommend it to first year students. 
because it's a great way how, how to meet uh, other colleagues, other students, not only from medical faculty, but also from other fields that Charles University offers. Yeah, so we are really looking forward to welcoming you at Charles University in the upcoming year. Uh, here is just a contact for you to, to have a look uh, on our website or check our social media. If you have any questions, you can always ask us at admissions at lf1.cuni.cz. And we are happy to answer all your questions, but now we're going to answer all your questions that you have right now that you are watching us. So I will stop sharing right now and we can get back to the questions that you have. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Zana. Thanks, uh, we'll Susanna. Bring... Go ahead, Adrian. Sorry, uh, we'll, we'll bring Virginia into the, into the conversation as well. Just want to, mm -hmm. to, to, to confirm, what we're talking about here is the fact that there are, I maybe didn't explain quite, quite clearly, um, there are two parallel courses taught at our faculty. Uh, and this is a historic thing, dating back to the creation of, of, uh, of this faculty. They originally taught in Latin and Czech, during the Austro-Hungarian Empire taught in German and Czech. And as of uh, the fall of, of the communist occupation in 1989, 1990, it's been in so more than 30 years now, it's been English and Czech. So we're talking about, this is an international course at First Faculty taught in English. All six years are taught in English. All communication is in English. However, as you notice in the slide, uh, which had about the curriculum in, in the first three years, there was Czech language. And we think it's very important for you to be able to learn. We teach you both get around town check uh, as well as medical check for communicating with, with patients. Although one of the problems here maybe is that everybody speaks English. So even when you want to try speaking Czech, like, oh, don't worry, I speak. it's a really difficult language. We'll speak to you in English, it's fine. Um, but I think it's really important that you learn uh, a new language. Um, Czech as a language, uh, especially as a foreigner learning it, and I'm sure Virginia can uh, can confirm. Um, what's useful is Czech is in a Latin alphabet, so so it's the same alphabet like you see here in, in uh, uh, the names and and, and uh, the way it's written. It's not Cyrillic or anything like that. It's Latin-based alphabet. It's also phonetic. So what you read is what you say. The grammar is one of the most difficult. I speak about seven languages, and Czech is the most complicated grammar I've ever known. Um, but the Czechs understand that they know that themselves, so they uh, they, they give you the understanding for it, and they, they they're quite okay with it. They really appreciate when we try uh, as foreigners to speak uh, Czech with them. So we we do teach Czech for the first three years. Um, however, even if your Czech is not good enough to speak to a patient in their native tongue during the clinical years, and you decide to do your clinical rotations here with us in our top facilities here in Prague. There is always a doctor or someone there available, always, to translate and to speak in English uh, for you. So, sorry, Ben. Okay. Back to you. No problems. No, thank you so much for that, because obviously that's dealt with actually some of the questions which have already appeared. Uh, what we will do is, as we start going through the questions, we will delegate some of these. I can deal with some of the procedural things. I am going to share my screen again to everyone to show everyone the application system on the Medical Doorway website, which is fully electronic. Also, I will show the personal statement pro forma, which will be sent to all applicants who apply through the Medical Doorway portal. And I'm also going to show the preparation system that we've built to help you kind of start preparing for the entrance examination. All of this is available free of charge through Medical Doorway. Uh, that's the one kind of difference that Medical Doorway has to various other organizations you might come across that probably don't actually work with Charles University, even if they say they do. So what we're going to do now is go through some of the questions. I'm going to deal with the questions on the Q&A feature, then I'll have to go through chat because some of people have asked different questions on different uh, sides. But if I try and keep it consistent, that way we are not going to miss anything. Okay, so first question is, I'm a second year biology student at a university in Lebanon. Can I join the dentistry school when I finish my degree? How much time will I have to, grad will I have to graduate? And what are the requirements? Well, as Eitan demonstrated in the presentation, everyone who's actually in their final year of high school or after is eligible to apply for both of the programs, but you're not if your program is not a medical or dental program, going to get much, if any, credit recognition from the program that you're studying, especially if it's outside of ECTS. So do expect to study the full five years 
of the dentistry program if you are one of the students selected on that program. I think eight, there are about 40 programs, 40, sorry, 40 seats available on the dentistry program now. Is that, is that the case? That's right. There, so there are, that's correct. There are 40 seats available in the first year uh, for dentistry. Um, and just to quantify, we, we do look, we're happy to look at if you've done any degree prior, uh, the contents of that degree. We'll only look at it once you've been accepted because mm. more students, unfortunately, are not able to pass the entrance criteria than those that are. It's 10 to 1 in applicants per place available. Um, but of course, if you've studied biology and you've got this wonderful degree, then you'll have an advantage in, in both your written exam uh, and also maybe maturity to be able to do well in the, in the interviews. So we'll then take into account the modules that you've studied um, in your course and we'll match them up with what we teach here. If you can prove that um, the quality, the depth and the, the type of examination was equivalent to ours or better, then they will be taken into account, they will be recognized, and you can have certain subjects um, which will be counted for, so you won't have to study those. Up to what we, we have some process called ISP, Individual Study Plan, which could mean that you could do, for instance, years one and two combined, but um, or, or some variant of that. Um, <clears throat> but um, again, it's all about the ECTS. If you're a member of the, the European accreditation system, it makes things much easier because they're all aligned. So we can immediately say that is exactly equivalent to that, therefore, boom, it's counted. Um, outside of that, it's on an individual basis, which we can look into on an individual basis once you've been successful at the admissions system. Exactly, yeah. And the, the thing is, we do get lots of inquiries with people wanting advance, you know, information on whether credits are going to be recognised. That's not how the system works. If that was going to be the case, the university would have to appoint, I think, just five full-time members of staff to deal with those particular questions. It will only be done once you've actually applied, once you've been admitted, and actually, generally, once you've enrolled at the university, to be honest, that's when a lot of the time things get done. Sometimes there is the ability to look at transcripts beforehand. But the other thing is, if we are going to do that, your transcripts do need to be fully legalised as well. Uh, there's actually a very strict regulatory process to go through for that to happen. Uh, you know, add you on one more thing. Go Sorry. Ahead. Especially with dentistry, you must understand that dentistry is a very practical subject. Mm. And we're very proud of the fact that here we give you some of the highest quality practical education. So much so that I was approached by BUPA, which is one of the largest uh, health organizations in the UK. They own the BUPA Dental. They have about 800 or more clinics in the UK. And I had a discussion with them the other day because they have some of our graduates on their training scheme. And they were astounded by the amount of practical knowledge and skills that our students had compared to uh, both UK and other European medical schools. And in fact, when we have, or well, dental schools, I should be, to be specific, we often have students from, I don't know, Spain and France and Portugal uh, and Italy coming to us, and they have literally no practical skills in comparison. Our dental students start uh, treating their own patients, their live patients, halfway through the second year. Hmm. So it's a very intensive practical training, which is critical for dentistry. Medics get it easy. They don't have the responsibility. Dentists, from the day you graduate, you're free to treat patients by yourself. So, you know, you're carrying our name, our reputation as much as we are carrying yours. Um, so we want you to be the absolute best. And that's why we're the only medical school, dental school outside of the UK to be accepted, have our students accepted every year directly onto the vocational training scheme, onto the VT foundation training scheme. Okay, fantastic, brilliant. Now there's a hell of, there's a well, hell of, there's a lot of questions coming in. They're coming in all the time. We are going to get through all of them as as quickly as possible. So if we do skim over some of them very quickly and give a quick answer, just please just bear that in mind that we are literally only forty minutes away from the kind of scheduled end of this of this session. So, uh, Bino, regarding residency stats, we don't have specific stats to hand right now. But one thing that the university does every year is have a jobs fair. And many hospitals, especially from the UK, Germany, et cetera, do come and visit the university. And many of the graduates, both from the medical and dental program, have job offers even before they've graduated. In fact, you know, the reputation of Charles First faculty does uh, kind of, you know, proceed. Uh, and as a result, as a student for there, you are going to find that you're extremely employable regardless of where you wish to go and study. And I'll add on to your second question about GMC for non-EU students. Britain's not in the European Union anymore. Uh, now, actually, what this has done for non-European 
passport holders has given a great advantage because previously when Britain was a member of the European Union, if you were from a non-EU country or non-EEA country, I should even say, it's even more than that, you were bottom of the pile when it came to jobs behind all other citizens from the European Union. If, for example, you have a passport, say, from Hong Kong or India or Pakistan or Nigeria or Mexico, I did notice there are some people from Latin America uh, on the presentation as well. Actually, now you're joint third in line for jobs behind British and Irish citizens and those who've got pre-settled status in the UK. Uh, so you'll actually find that the opportunities, if you're a non-European Union passport holder and you wish to come and work in the UK, have significantly improved with Britain's departure from the European Union. One of the groups that have probably actually uh, benefited from, from that political decision. Uh, someone's asked about prerequisites for students wanting to study. In effect, you've got to pass that entrance exam and provided you're in the final year of high school or you've graduated from high school, then you're eligible to apply and try the entrance examination. That's uh, right. I don't so, know about this. So, Sorry, so, so just to confirm that, that the, the legal requirement from the country is that if you're going to study medicine in the Czech Republic or in the EU, that you must have completed your high school education. That's not an age, that is completion of high school education. So if you completed your high school education and you're able to pass our entrance exams and our interviews, then we can offer you a place. So whether you're from the States and you're 18, you don't have to do any extra exams or a, a prior degree, um, or as from the UK, you haven't finished your A-levels uh, from the rest of the world. All, all we want is you to pass our entrance exam and our interviews. Perfect. Uh, someone's asked about percentage of students who pursue post-graduation. Actually, most students will go on to clinical work afterwards and do, the, do some form of residency, whether that be in Israel, Germany, the US, uh, Canada, the UK, but some will actually go on and do PhD studies in the Czech Republic. It's easy to fall in love with the Czech Republic or fall in love in the Czech Republic. And many uh, students actually do decide to go ahead and uh, remain in the Czech Republic to have to do to a PhD or some research afterwards. Eitan, do you have any students that in your mind that have gone ahead and done that? So I think I actively encourage uh, our students to do research. And in fact, we have coming up at the end of this month, our International Undergraduate Medical Research Conference, where our students amongst uh, others, but our students uh, actively um, uh, present their research, their current ongoing research or research they completed. They also do poster presentations. There's competitions for it. There's also hospitals will come and, and try and, and persuade the doctors, the, the students to come and work for them, do lectures with them across the globe. Um, Virginia, if I could bring you in, because you've been so patient with us. Um, your experience so far, your second year student, you, yes. you've made it through the hardest, the hardest year of anatomy, uh, the first year, yes. uh, with your friend behind you. Was it Yorick? The last I knew him quite well. Um, <laughs> yeah. What's your experience so far? Yeah, um, so I've loved every moment of it, even when I was staying up late studying <laughs> the bones behind me. Um, speaking about research, I'm, I'm actually going to be starting some research uh, at the end of this, this month. So it's definitely doable even for second year students. Um, and I'm also part of an organization called Medical Academia that's run by students, uh, connecting other medical students with research opportunities. So definitely research is, is a big thing that I care about and that it's easy to do. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is so important because when you're at medical school, there isn't really competition between you through the years. And although, I mean, there's a minor competition in that the top 10% of students every year will get scholarship from the faculty, um, otherwise, you know, the, there's, there's no set number of how many grade ones, twos and threes or fails we have to give. This doesn't exist. We want to give everyone the best results we can do, providing they have the knowledge, abilities for it. But when it comes to graduating, that's where the competition starts. And so if you've got publications, these are huge, huge things for making you sellable to be able to get that key job in the top hospitals amongst everyone else from across the, the world who's applying for them. So we, that's why research is really important and uh, important for you to do as an undergraduate student. So Virginia, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I hope you're gonna present at the, uh, the research conference or maybe the next one, next year's one. 
Brilliant. I'll, I'll actually, I'm actually coming to various events at Charles over the next 12 months anyway. So maybe if I'm in Prague, I can actually uh, head over to that uh, event as well. Someone's asked about, do you accept students coming from Mexico, Latin America? Yes. And we've supported students from across Latin America who've done the online exams over the last two years to Charles University. We've had, we've actually, once when we did uh, in-person exams, last time we did them, we had one in Hong Kong and a student flew in from Mexico to Hong Kong because that was the most convenient date for them. So yes, the answer is yes. And we will be support you all the way through the application preparation for the exam for your visa application as well thomas uh, uh has asked about erasmus uh can you give us a little bit of a heads up i don't know if uh susanna if you're the right person for this to talk a bit more about erasmus we, we are we've got 35 minutes so i don't want to dwell on it too much because we could fill an entire presentation up just about erasmus in itself but if you can just summarize what kind of erasmus opportunities there are for students Yes, definitely. I will try to keep it brief. So Erasmus is an exchange program for, for students who are studying at the universities in EU. But I, I need to state that if you, are part, if you want to become an Erasmus student, you don't go for Erasmus to the United States, for example. Erasmus is only within the European Union. In the past, we also had a Great Britain, but unfortunately not anymore. So Erasmus stays are for study programs in EU countries and few others, but not in the US. If you want to go for exchange program to the United States, we also have agreements with the universities from the United States. So yes, it's doable, it's possible. Uh, when it comes to your question about the competition, it depends on specific universities, specific countries, sometimes or oh, mm, we have a high number of applicants for a limited number of places that we can offer to our students to do um, study abroad options for other universities, for some other countries, um, the competition, it's not so high. So it depends then, but definitely you have an option to go and study abroad during your studies at Charles University. And it's highly encouraged. And for example, for Erasmus students, uh, for Erasmus program, you get a support, financial support from the EU, so you even get the money for that. Well, just, just to add, I think Mr. Nicola put very, very aptly uh, everything there, but we also have other programs like the IFMSA, the International Federation of Medical Student Associations, which is another organization which you could apply to to do lectures abroad. And on top of that, we have what we call the free mover um uh system where pretty much every country in the world where we have relations with uh affiliations with you can do rotations uh there uh erasmus is a european eu backed system which is funded by the eu um but we also have direct connections with hospitals from you know sheba in israel is ranked number ninth best hospital in the world uh, we have a uh, direct relationship with them. We have in America, we have in Britain, we have in Germany, we have in, in uh, countries across the globe. Most countries across the globe, we have um, relationships with hospitals and universities there, which will enable you to do rotations there. With the ones we have the close affiliation with, then those we, you can do up to all of your clinical rotations there. Lovely, perfect. Right, we're going to pack, uh, fly through the rest of the questions. Okay, I'm going to have to skim some of them. Uh, you know, we don't have exact stats to hand now about how many have gone specifically to the U UK or the US. When Professor Brisbane mentioned that 90% of students move abroad, he meant that nine out of 10 of the students that study at Charles First Faculty will then commence their medical uh, medical practice outside of the Czech Republic. And, that, and you're going to find Charles University students everywhere you could possibly imagine. And that's just because the university is so well regarded. But also the English language program has been running now for about 30 years, I believe. Uh, uh, Eitan, yes. So that's, that's uh, right. Yeah. So, so we have with, everywhere. The, the students that study here in Czech language, they will majority will stay mm -hmm. uh, here, like 90% will stay here in Czech Republic. Um, about 10 minutes, about 10% will still go abroad. Um, and the students who study here in English, in our international course in English, around about 90% will go abroad, only about 10%, one in, one in 10 will, will stay here in, in Czech Republic once they graduate. Um, historically, before Brexit, the vast majority wants to go to the US and the UK. The US because our US assembly results were so high. So it was very easy for them to get into the US to get into good rotations in the US uh, with matching. 
um, and the UK because of the British system, because of the recognition that Britain had here. These days, a large number want to go to Germany and Germany actively sponsors students. We have a very large number want to go to Israel. We have a large number of students now coming from Israel here who are, who are very high quality students. Uh, we have uh, students that we had on uh, two weeks ago, Zana and I were, were in the UAE and we signed a groundbreaking agreement with the UAE government um, and UAE University. Uh, because a lot of students come from UAE and want to go back to UAE um, to work in hospitals there. So the government's funding those as well. So it's, mm. it's I mean, Switzerland is another key place. Austria is interesting as well. France, they go across the globe. But the, the, the greatest number generally tend to want to go to Britain, US, Germany, Israel. Perfect. We have got over, uh, over about 54 questions in half an hour to kind of get right. them done. So it's going, to, it's going to move us through. So very quickly, I know that this will actually deal with a number of the questions in one go. Someone's asked about the application deadline. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to apply really in about 10 minutes on the Medical Doorway website. So if you just give me a moment, I am going to share my screen. Uh, I've got two screen shares to do. This is the Medical Doorway website. Uh, if you want to find out more about the university, you can do so. Uh, by clicking on universities, Let me just move my panel view. And Charles University First Faculty of Medicine is here, top on the left. A little video down here. Entrance exam dates are all there. You'll find the link to the application form here, or you can easily click apply now. And then you'll find Charles First Faculty here. Now, the next screen you will receive will be asking you where you want to do the entrance examination. For this year, you can use any of these forms at all because the entrance exams for First Faculty of Medicine is online from your own homes. So you can click on, say, any of the flags, fill in the form. We do ask you to upload your copy of your passport because we do get a number of people that just put uh, false applications in. So please do upload a copy of the passport there. And then we will go, go through that uh, application, check it all, and then come back to you with what we then need. Now, someone did say, when is the deadline? Now, officially, the university deadline is the end of April. However, you are going to need to prep your personal statement. So my, and, uh, my advice will be make the application on the Medical Doorway website over the next two weeks. That will then give us a chance to kind of get your personal statement pro forma out to you and then get that back from you review it and make sure that it's suitable for the university. And then we will then upload all of your information onto the uh, Charles University SIS system in advance of the deadline, okay? So my, adv my advice is now, the sooner you apply, the better. Uh, so we can process all that paper. The last thing we need to be doing is rushing around at the very last minute because at 11 p.m. UK time, midnight check time on the last day of April, the application system closes and then it's not possible to apply then. Now I'm going to share my screen again and I'm going to show uh, everyone online how what we've built to help students prepare. And this will deal with a lot of the questions and comments because there is always this anxiety about physics. I think students tend to focus very much on what they don't know or what they haven't studied rather than what they have studied, which actually is more than what you haven't. So uh, if we go back and share my screen again, we've developed a system, uh, if you can see my screen, which I now can't. Give me a second. For some reason, I can't see my screen. So give me a more minute. There we go. So back into Zoom and then share screen. Here we go. So we've developed this program called Czech Test Prep, which is specifically for the Czech programs. Uh, and we've done this really, it doesn't replace your IB, it doesn't replace your A-levels or anything like that. It simply gives you an additional uh, resource to help you prepare or help focus your attention. Now, as Professor Brisbane said, maths is uh, kind of core to physics really. And what you'll find is if you have studied maths at IB, even at the standard level or A-level maths or even down to GCSE level maths, you will find that actually that does give you a good foundation for the kinds of questions you're going to get asked in physics. But we have developed this program here to help you prepare for the entrance examination with various lectures that we've prepared. OK, so that was definitely going to help you kind of refine your knowledge for those entrance exams. And that should have dealt with a lot of the queries that people had, because I did notice in the comments and the questions, there was a lot of anxiety about the physics 
there as well. So we can actually skip through that uh, quite quite quickly. Good. Uh, there is a score for the applicant uh, for the entrance exam. I believe it's 180 out of 300, if I'm not to be mistaken at the moment to progress. To um, it's yeah, Correct. it's to pass the written part. You have to get at least 60 percent to go over that That's hurdle. It. Yeah. And if you get more than 90 percent, uh, then you you won't have to do the MMIs. If you get between 60 to 90 percent, you have to do the interviews. Perfect. But yeah. all the scores are back to zero for the interviews. Okay, so I said I've heard a lot about the course being very strict uh, academically. Well, this is Charles University. This is the equivalent of going to Oxford or Cambridge in Europe. So do expect to be educated to that level. Bear this in mind. The surgeon who led, although he didn't come from Charles University specifically, the surgeon who led the USA's first full face transplant graduated from the Czech Republic at the Brigham Women's Hospital in Boston, Bodan Pomahatch. Gives you kind of an idea about the level of knowledge and skills that graduating from the Czech Republic can take you to. Professor Brisman qualified from first faculty and is a, was a consultant maxofacial surgeon at the Royal Free. If you really want the knowledge and skills to take your career to that level, do expect to have to study late nights, as Virginia can definitely testify to. Do expect to put the work in. Don't expect not to turn up to lessons or your exam to magically appear through the course. But it's great for me. I get the chance to go to graduations now more than ever before because we've been working with Charles University for a significant amount of time and some other universities longer than that. And we see our students graduating. So don't expect an easy ride. But if you want to be a doctor and you want to say that I'm a graduate from the 10th oldest medical school in the world, a university that even Einstein studied at, then you will have, uh, you, you will put the effort in and you will graduate. This video is on YouTube afterwards for the person who asked, definitely yes. Now, just to, ben, just to qualify, I, I was taught yes. histology by a three times Nobel Prize nominee, uh, Professor Lloyder. Um, and uh, you, you, I, I can go with what Ben's saying, you know, mm. you will hold our reputation with you. And reputation is everything. We're top 1% in the world of medical schools. Um, Virginia, what was your exams like in your first year? How did you uh, how did you cope with them? Yeah, so coming from the US, you know, I had never really had an oral exam. And so preparing for that was a new experience. And I felt like I was prepared. And it really was from paying attention in class. It, everything I needed to know, for the most part, was presented to me in one way or the other. So even though it's terrifying having to sit in front of different professors and speak out loud and have to come up with answers on the top of your head, it, it is doable and, and you are, you're, they want you to succeed. Everybody here wants you to succeed and wants you to be the best you can be. So even if you fail your first attempt, you will go home and you will study harder and you will come back for your second attempt because you get three tries and you will blow it out of the park. You will do amazing because that's, you just feel, safe when you when you take exams even though they're really hard <laughs> yeah thank you thank you for that I, and, and that's why we've got virginia here really to talk about somebody who's progressing through the program okay right uh, there is quite a lot of questions about financing now i'm going to kind of cover a lot of these questions in one nutshell if that's okay then if you've asked a specific question please just listen to this because we don't really have time to deal with every single minutiae question that you've asked students have to bring finance with them OK, so you do have to bring your finance with you, whether that's private finance, parental support or whether that's from your country that offers a particular kind of scholarship system. So you do have to bring finance with you. So there are no, uh, as far as I'm aware, fully funded scholarships. There is no free free rides at the first faculty of medicine on the English language program. OK, um, so not not quite. There are depending on which country they come from. Ben. So, so yeah. for instance, Germany offer for their citizens, as does Sweden, as does Norway, as does Israel, a few others, 100% yeah. scholarship. Yeah, just to clarify, I mean, from the Czech Republic itself, the Czech Republic okay. doesn't, and the university doesn't offer that. You have to bring the funding with you. So if you are from Germany or Israel or from the US or Canada, even, you can actually often bring, or Norway, you can bring funding with you. Sometimes it's a loan, sometimes it's a... Uh, a, a grant from your local government, but there will be no direct funding from the Czech Republic for you to study on the English language program. However, as Professor Brisman did mention, there is the scholarship system for the very top students. Can you just give us a very brief, you know, 30 second summary about what, how, that, how that runs? Um, in very brief, so every year, 
in, in every academic year, the top 10% of all students in every academic year are given a scholarship based on merit, on their achievements for their exams. So if you were to get, uh, the, the exams are graded one, two, three, four. So one is excellent, two is very good, three is good, four is fail. If you were to get straight ones in your exams, then uh, you will get, I'm sure, a scholarship. So the top students, top 10% of all years get scholarship every year. Perfect, great. We are having to run through some of the questions quickly, guys, because we've people have asked a, a lot of really good questions, and not just on here, or not just on the Q and A feature as well. So we will be going through the chat feature next as well. We've shown how to prepare for the exams, uh, and then no, someone's asked about the entrance exam taken by all students at the same time. No, there are various dates, and you can find all of the dates on the Medical Doorway website on under exams in the menu. So do go to medicaldoorway.com and take a look at the dates there. What we would advise is if you do need to apply for a visa, the earlier you can take the exam, the better, because sometimes getting an appointment at an embassy, depending on where you're applying from, can be difficult. Uh, but you'll find all the dates that are there on the Medical Doorway website. The next date that we've got students going in for is the end of April, 26th of April, and then some beginning of May. Uh, someone's asked, what level of physics do I need? Do take a look at the Medical Doorway resources when you get access to them. That will give you an idea of the level that you need to be aiming at. Uh, and someone's asked about clinical rotations. Uh, I think the vast majority of students do their clinical rotations actually in the Czech Republic. That's correct, isn't it, Eitan? Uh, yeah? it's, it's, it's a mixture these days, actually. We, um, we, we offer every student every clinical rotation here in Prague. There are some rotations here which you can't get anywhere else. The, the, the quality here is better than you get anywhere else in the world. Um, there are things like the, the um, uh, what's it called? The Positon uh, Treatment Center, which mm -hmm. uh, from the UK, they fly out here to be, to be educated here uh, at it. Um, and the Obzagaini Center here is, is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but there are others where, which are great, but I also recommend very much, as Ms. Hanikova said earlier, that as good as the system is here, it's really important to get experience from other countries, other ways mm -hmm. of doing things. And so that's why we actively encourage you to do rotations abroad, to get experience abroad in other, in other ways of doing things. Mm. Many of the medical doorway students actually do summer placements in hospitals uh, in the UK as well to help get that, to get that experience, okay? Uh, Someone's asked about failing the course. No, you've got a number of attempts to pass each module. And then if you, you can actually move on to something called an ISP, which I think Professor Brisbane mentioned earlier on as well. So if you, do, if you do fail an exam, you're not then suddenly, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes actually you need to fail. Sometimes failing tells you actually, actually you don't know this particular uh, concept into as deep a knowledge as you can. And as Virginia said correctly, the second time she took it, she completely sailed it. And actually, unlike in the UK, where if your second attempt is always capped at the lowest mark, that's not the case in the Czech Republic. You get the exact same score uh, uh, at all times. Failure, that's right. Failure is not a problem. Making a mistake, is, it's human to make errors. Making error, you know, to errors to be human. Not learning from the mistake is a problem. And that's why you get three attempts at each exam. Uh, the exams are difficult. They really are difficult, but they're meant to be difficult. It's to really be, to make you into being the best in the world. Uh, and that's why you get three attempts out of them. If you were to fail all three attempts, it then comes down to the number of credits you have overall during that academic year. And that's the real key. You've got to have, you're given the option, you, you have what's called compulsory subjects and you have what, what we call eligible electives. And you can get bonus credits by doing extra eligible electives, which means that if you were to, to fail something, you have a little bit of leeway not to be expelled, not to, to, to be kicked out because you, if you get enough credits, you can, as, as Ben said, you can continue into the next year, carrying with some subject you weren't so strong at from the year beforehand. Yeah. Okay, how long is the written part of the entrance exam? Last time it was two hours, 45 minutes, is that the case? Or two and a half hours, Professor? Two and a half hours. It works out at 50 minutes per paper. There's more than enough time, more than enough time for that. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, Paulina said, if you're not coming from a country that pays the fees, then yes, you do have to pay the 450,000 Czech krone yourself. Uh, effectively, that pays the staff salaries at the university. But it's a state university, it's not profit making. So every single penny of tuition fees is pumped straight back in to the university. 
Uh, so that's about IB score requirements. There is no specific score for the IB. It's based on the entrance exam. You do have to successfully graduate with your IB diploma. Uh, and uh, we can deal with your apostolization of those kind of things afterwards as well. So don't worry about that. Uh, we've talked about minimum score for the entrance exam, 60% to progress to the interview. Uh, I'm going to deal with some of the general entrance exam questions. I might go back to some of the other questions that uh, I'm leaving blank for a moment. Where would we find previous exam papers? You're not going to find many of them anywhere, but uh, you do find the resources on the Medical Doorway website are highly aligned to the actual, uh, to the to the entrance exam subject matter. Uh, do you need an IELTS? Actually, if you're coming, you don't need an IELTS for this program. The interview in itself will tell the staff whether your actual English language competence is good enough or not. You know, sometimes you can take an IELTS test and we have British people that can take an IELTS test and not perform very well on it because a lot of IELTS and TFL are right exam technique. I know I'm from Liverpool originally. There's no way an IELTS test is going to actually be aligned to my way of, of talking and my grammar at, at all. I agree. Uh, That's a part, part of the, just to give you a little secret information, Mm. Um, uh, part of the uh, the objective marking in the interview process is about your communication skills, is about your ability to communicate, uh, and that's really assessing: do you have the language abilities to to study in English? We take into account that English may not be your first language. Uh, for many of the teachers, English may not be their first language. Um, but you need to have an ability to, A, pass the written exam, which is in English, the MCQ, uh, and pass the interviews, which is performed, which are performed in English. So um, we don't need any extra uh, uh, quantitative exam of your English grammar knowledge or anything like that. Okay. Someone's talking about uh, IB getting the results. You actually get the results beginning of July. We actually submit your paperwork at the enrollment in September. We upload a copy of that onto the actual system prior to your enrollment as well. But you will get information about general notification rules when you've passed the exam towards when your IB results are going to be issued. And we, we know the team at IB in Geneva as well. So we actually often worked liaise directly with IB in Geneva. Uh, there's no special considerations for IB candidates. Everyone is given the same exam. Everyone is expected to pass the same exam. It's equal for everyone, regardless of your uh, qualification of intake. Uh, someone's doing A-levels, math, psychology, biology, and chemistry. Yeah, as I said, that is an actual great profile for applying to the first faculty of medicine because A-level maths actually gives you a very good grounding for the actual physics exam that you will take additionally when you use the resources that we provide. Uh, and if you want to do a tour, I know, Susanna, the, there are tour opportunities of the university now that travel is a lot uh, now less restricted. So that is definitely something we often arrange independent tours as well. So some of our students want to fly out for a particular time and do visit the faculty. What I would say is if you're going in the summer, just bear in mind that that's when most academic staff and administrators take their vacation because it's very difficult to take vacation during the teaching time. Uh, but, you know, someone's asked about the intake for non-EU. There's actually no intake, depending on your nationality. Everyone is considered the same. So there's not a EU allowance, non-EU allowance, et cetera, et cetera. As Professor Brisbane said, there are two programmes, one in Czech for the local students and one in English for anyone who wants to study in English. And we often, oft, we often do get Czech passport holders studying on the English language programme as well, especially if they've lived in the US or the UK. And likewise, there are some uh, non-Czechs who, who speak Czech mm. or learn Czech and they're studying the Czech course. We have uh, students from Greece, from Slovakia, from other countries um, who are studying the Czech course. Yeah, okay. So that's in the last three years where one could do the internship practice hospitals. Could you really go anywhere you want, meaning there's no... So the whole idea, just to answer that question, the whole idea right. is for you to... There's more than one question in there, yeah. Yeah, it's for you to get experience in, in other healthcare systems. Czech is spoken in one country in the world, Czech Republic. Mm. Um, and we, we, of course, encourage you to do rotations here. We'd love you to do rotations here. And there are some you will decide, even if you've got the opportunity to do rotations anywhere in the world, that you will want to do the rotations here. But we give you the opportunity to do those rotations abroad. Bear in mind, you're studying our curriculum, our syllabus, fulfilling our logbook, and we are the ones accountable for the quality of your degree. 
you will must, you will have to come back to Prague or via Zoom or wherever else the, each individual department allows it. You must do our exams. And uh, because you are our student, of course, the tuition fees still stand because you're still uh, having to, to do our studies. So uh, because we enable you to do every rotation here in Prague, and it's up to you to decide if you do one month here, three months here, six months here, a year here in any one given year, um, it doesn't change the costs for us of whether one teacher is teaching one student or five students. It's the same cost of that teacher. It's the same insurance for the building. It's the same electricity cost for the light bulb. Um, so the costs for us are the same split amongst the students, um, of which you are one of our students. But you will be also examined by our staff um, and fulfilling our curriculum. So yes, the tuition fees still stand uh, for it. Yeah, there's a lot of repeat questions for people. So if you don't, if you've asked a question, uh, I've already answered. I'm not, and it's the same as what we've done before. I'm not going to repeat myself. We obviously just don't have time to do that, and I want to ensure that those questions that where that our priorities do get answered. Uh, and I'll very quickly answer. There was a question about dentistry. There was um, yeah. the robotics for dentistry. Yeah. Uh, yes, you will be on the high tech mannequins, the dental mannequins, from um, pretty much first week or second week of your dental uh, studies here. You'll also be in the simulation center doing, uh, we have a specialized course on medical emergencies for dental, uh, for dentists or dental students. Um, so you'll be getting everything that the medics get and more. Yep, lovely. Uh, someone's asked about uh, the interviews. They usually happen two days or so after the uh, entrance exam and you'll be, inter you'll be invited through your email address for your, uh, for your uh, interview. Uh, common examples of clinical rotations, what you would expect from a medical school. You will rotate in different areas, obstetrics, gynecology, pediatrics, motel, uh, public health, uh, uh, oncology, palliative care, etc. There's no real, it's no different than doing clinical rotations at any medical school anywhere in the world. Like I said, uh, as Professor Brisman would, would tell us when we do presentations together, it doesn't matter where you go, the human body diseases are the same. I always say, you know, you don't need a, you don't need an, a, a, a a, uh, an adapter to uh, reproduce with a member of another of another nationality, you know. <laughs> so let's have a quick look. I'm going through some of the questions here that we've not uh, studied. If you want the specifics, Ben, of of, uh, of what subjects are when, mm -hmm. then on on the faculty website you can find hidden away there. There is under the student section you can find the actual curriculum and subjects for yeah. each year. Yeah, you do have to or take physics speak to MedSoc, know. speak to our students like Virginia, yeah. Uh, yeah. and they'll tell you. People asking about, do I have to take the physics paper? Yes, you do have to take the physics paper. We're not going to let you off. Everyone is treated equally, okay? And that's why you need to prep for it. Uh, application fee for medical doorway? No, there isn't. You simply pay, we bill you the university's application fee, and then we pay the university on account that. Uh, that's simply because uh, we have to make sure the application is done very quickly. We don't, at the moment, we're not doing in-person exams. So we're doing online exams. Uh, I don't know what the plan is for next year, Eitan. What would you say the next year? Are we moving back to in-person exams or what is the strategy for 2023? So 2023, we're in the final stages of, of uh, cooperating with Pearson View organization. Pearson View is a global uh, company that specializes in computer-based exams. And they have their centers in 186 countries uh, across the globe in more than 6,000 exam centers. Uh, so we're just the process of finalizing the agreement with them that they will provide uh, the exam uh, in their center, the written exam in their centers. So mm. you can sign up with them uh, via Medical Doorway. We'll give you the links for that. Um, that um, you will do the exam. Like if you're in the UK, the UK CAT, the UK Clinical Aptitude Test, you have to do by, by Pearson View. Same system. You'll find a location, a date, and time convenient for you to do the exam. Uh, and you'll do it at their center in those exams. And then we'll have um, every month, there'll be set days for interviews. Uh, across the application season. Wonderful. That's going to be a, that's going to Online. open access to so many people. Okay. For that, for someone who asked about the scholarships for the top 10 student, no, it doesn't pay your full tuition. It offers a, a relatively modest discount in the tuition. Uh, let me go. Uh, so I said, if more than 90, 40 people get more than 90% for dental exam, would they all be offered a place? Okay. That's not going to happen. OK, the law of averages just means it's not going to happen yet. Yeah, it might happen in some parallel universe at some point in a, in a universe of infinite possibilities. But I can quite confidently say that not 40 people are going to get 90 percent on the entrance exam. For the first so I, I've been vice dean for a year and a half and uh, I've been involved. I mean, uh, back in this university for the last five years, 
an average over the last five years is one percent of students yeah. who take the entrance exam might get uh 90 percent or more one percent of applicants um very very few perfect okay someone's asked about what the pass rate is for each year now can you give us a very brief summary we've only got about five minutes left but i do want to go through some of the other questions on the other uh four that people have asked them just tell me how the, the the exams in the university for students who are studying there are graded and perhaps virginia if you want to come in and give us a little exam give us a little bit of a uh, student anecdote about how your exams have been taken place and while you're answering that i'm just going to fly through a few of the other questions and take some notes thank you sure so um i and i just answered a question for amy in the comments as well so about which is like a typical week looks like in exams um, we are split between lectures and practical experiences. So you have like a three hour practical in anatomy where you go in person now um, and you actually handle a heart or you see a body and you learn about how everything's related. And so you may have, uh, you have weekly quizzes in anatomy um, and other little quizzes that may be multiple choice or you have to draw a schematic of something. So they're very practical based. Um, and then at the end of the course, so it might be like for anatomy and histology your first year, it's at the end of second semester. After you've spent an entire year learning the material, you have your final exam, which is um, changing. So I'm not sure what it'll be next year, but it might be a combination of multiple choice and then your oral exam. Um, and for histology, you have to look at a slide. So it is really practical and hands on. Um, and then you have to just talk. So you are given at the beginning of each course, the list of material you, you're expected to know. So even though it is anything on that list, they can ask you about, you have material that you know to prepare. So you're not completely in the dark. Did that answer the question? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, and it's not a uh, necessarily a given percentage. There is a it's an ordinal ranking scale, which is typical in many oral examinations, because it's very difficult to give a particular percentage in those kinds of exams. You know, uh, we would actually set for those students who have applied. We will send you a pro forma to complete your personal statement, and we have a specific email address uh, where we ask you to send it, so it gets stored securely when we do the applications as well. So we've got a very specific email that we'll ask you to send it to. So don't worry, once you've applied and, and paid the university application fee, which is only a nominal amount of money, uh, then you will uh, get access to that uh, pro forma and then you can then uh, work on. Right, we, we are literally coming up to the last three minutes. So I'm gonna choose a, a couple of questions uh, that are still left unanswered and uh someone's asked about the full scholarship from germany i think isabel if you drop me an email to hello at medicaldoorway.com i'll get the exact information sent over to you about that from the faculty uh, essentially so that, it's just, just for a very brief it's it's when you've passed the entrance exam and interviews we've been offered by us we then put you in touch with uh, the organization with the german uh, government and the hospitals organization uh, and they will do a separate system assessing you um uh, for that and someone's asked here about and this is probably going to be the, the last question before we summarize really and sorry for those few questions that we haven't actually got back to just because there were so many and i know some of them are just themes on on questions that we've already answered so i think we've answered like 95 percent of what you would have asked anyway but about lectures now my experience is that students are separated into groups seminar groups of about 10 students and then there will be some lectures, but then a lot of the time is done in small group laboratory based work and seminars. Is that the case, Virginia? If you're going to give us a bit more of your experience about that, say, compared to the sage on the stage philosophy, which is prevalent in so many universities. Yeah, so definitely it is very much focused on you participating in your learning. So even during lectures, when there is an expert or a clinician who's standing in front of the room, they want to hear from you. It, it is all about engagement and you being an active participant in your education. So that carries over into practicals as well. You are not expected to just stand there and watch the professor handle the body. You put on gloves and you get involved. So everything is about you learning, being hands-on, um, and you just having to take charge in, in your own education, which I think is different from other schools because it, it puts a lot of 
emphasis on you take like taking responsibility for your future. You are at the beginning of becoming a physician and that's really stressed. Virginia, have you done much of the consultation system? Have you used consultation much? I, I did. It was all online last year for us, um, but I, I did. Being able to speak with my professors when I had a question, especially in anatomy, uh, was really important. And uh, I had a really great TA, teaching assistant as well, in, in all of my classes. So they, they also were a huge support. I think that's really important. And one thing that stands out different here from many, many other universities is uh, the, this consultation system that, that these, the professors, the teachers, we really treat you as equals. We want to, we have a relationship with you and, and friendships with you. And I, I have friendships now with professors who taught me when I was still a student. In fact, some of them even came to my wedding um, and, and I would meet on a weekly basis for a coffee or, or, or a chat or going through problems and, and issues. Um, so the students have a very close relationship with their teachers. At King's, I studied at King's when I was already a, a practicing doctor. Uh, you know, I was a surgeon already and I was studying dentistry because I had to, to do head, neck and face surgery. I don't have any relationship with the teachers at King's uh, at all. Even though I was their peer, I was their equal and sometimes their senior. Um, I don't have a relationship with them. But in Prague, students will have friendships, relationship with their, with their teachers uh, on an academic level. Uh, which is wonderful. It means you can really, you really have the opportunity to learn. And there's no such thing as a silly question. All questions are good questions. Right. Thank you so much for that. This has been a great session. We've actually gone right just over where we wanted to. And we had a huge number of people joining us. We've still got a lot of people here on YouTube. I'm just looking at the numbers there and it is remarkable. Thank you so much. I want to say a huge thank you to Professor Brisman for giving away his time again and helping us. It's like 8 p.m. in the Czech Republic now as well. And he, you know, I know he'll be working till midnight, gone midnight, and then up early in the morning. Uh, thank you again to Susanna. Uh, you know, all the team here are here basically to inform you and really give you the, re the truth about how to apply and how to get into the reality of studying at Charles University in Prague. There is a huge amount of unreliable information, especially online, and we know where some of that information comes from. Uh, this is really to cut through all of that and give you the truth because what I'm enjoying now. We've, I've been working with international students going to study medicine in Europe since 2011. Uh, what I enjoy, and I've not got many grey hairs actually, I've got a few coming, but not many. What I enjoy is seeing how the students that I've supported change over that six years. And back at our exhibition at the Royal Society of Medicine in November, where Professor Brisbane came and represented the first faculty, we had a group of our students who graduated and were working in the NHS for about three years now. And to see them, I remember talking to them when they were 18, 19 year old, you know, aspiring applicants. And to see them, you know, now graduates working in the NHS and supporting students who are actually now coming through the start of the, of the system is really rewarding. And like I'm off to more graduations now than ever before. And that's really now for me, the real reward that I get from seeing students, uh, you know, uh, enroll and apply and sit the entrance exam. So I'll be there with you in those entrance exams. I'll be there with you and my, my staff will be there with you at your enrollment and we'll be there with you when you graduate as well. Uh, and, you know, and really to do that in Prague and spend six years in Prague changes you as a person. Uh, you will have a wonderful time. You'll have a whole network of colleagues and, and peers who you will know for the rest of your life, professional life, as well as your natural life. And they will be based all over the world. You will truly have a global network of colleagues and friends that will stick with you forever because you're going to go through a lot together over the six years in medical school. It's not something which you will do anonymously, put it this way. But I want to say a huge thank you for, to Virginia. You know, Virginia's two years in now, four more years after this to be a fully qualified doctor back to North Carolina or one of the other states where Charles places its, uh, its, its, its graduates after completion. So I want to say thank you as well to all the people who signed up and have listened and have asked questions. We've got through most of the questions, perhaps not all of them, but I think it's very informative. For those that have been watching this still online, you can re-watch this on the YouTube channel. Uh, just go to YouTube and look for Medical Doorway. We are there. Hit subscribe and you'll see many of the other webinars that we'll be doing throughout the year, as well as the ones that we've done previously, which involve perhaps students from other perspectives, including some of our students from Asia. OK, but I want to say thank you. Good evening. Uh, Thank you have very a great much, evening. And take care. Uh, stay safe. And hopefully, we'll see some of you in our entrance exams and in Prague.
this coming September.